first of all, we're going to do a quick drawing of this, um, Gold Hill. Uh, this is an angle of perspective. The, uh, the road goes and falls, so it falls around the corner. So we've taken advantage of that, the fact that of the curvature of the road uh, by emphasising the way it goes up because we're going slightly up the road along and down now the houses at Gold Hill come down like that but you want them to look like they're actually going down into the the road so the trick to do that is to keep the roofs at an angle and they're not straight they're slightly up I would say about 15 degrees up there yeah so if you keep that angle all the way following the the houses you shouldn't really go wrong so we can see the houses going down there so, so I'm going to start from the top we have a quite a large house here on the right then we have one property now I'm only drawing these in quite loose quite rough but these angles I want to keep true and here we have some chimney stacks we can put those in with the paint in a bit so yeah, there's another one there and there's another chimney there and this house goes right the way down here keeping that angle the angle of that true to that one there and there's another one that comes along there now the thing we do need to remember is all these need to be quite straight lines down there to property so these are proper vertical lines there but we can do what we want with these well as long as we keep them to the same angle and there's a smaller one and that comes along there and that there and now we have a big old thatched cottage which goes into two actually there. and here goes up there <coughs> and there's another cheeky little roof that comes along here and it cuts into that that roof there there now it's, it's an overhanging roof so we'll just cut in a little bit and go down there this part here we've got a big old tree which hides this awkward angle I can say that we've actually we've done it right so it shouldn't have been a problem anyway so we'll get these chimney stacks <coughs> the right angle the right length and there 
that out to here. I'm just going to alter this this road a little bit. That's there. Now we're there. There you go. Everything's subject to change. <laughs> Just as long as you get the right proportions in initially, you should be all right. Uh, he goes quiet. But there. Now, this road. I don't want to make these buildings too tall because I think they're a little bit shorter. The facade of it is, the face of it is a little bit shorter than that. This comes around about there. This is why you should never. Um, go too harsh with your with your pencil lines initially. You've got to be able to just go over them, just correct them. And there is a house there but I can't see much. So it's been hidden by these I think they're called buttresses. There. Yeah. trees and bushes which go along along here these are going to give it a little colour it's going to really brighten this picture up even though it's a beautiful spot it can look a little bit dull at times so now we've got to just get the windows in only roughly there you go, there's one there, and he has it's a beautiful big window at the bottom with shutters. And we can use them as our central <coughs> point of interest. Yeah. Well, he's a focus that we can plan the rest of our painting around. So now we, once we've got him in place, and get the proportions right yeah he has a big undergrowth of greenery there ivy or whatever it is and here this one he's got a big hole Now some of these have got little, little balconies to keep the roadway clear for them, so. That one there, and uh, we'll put this one here. Now, that goes over there. I think this should be a little bit further off there. Okay. And, and here we'll put a window there. And a window there. And a door here. Now it's how we keep into this angle, everything there. So it makes sense. Uh, down 
there. And another one here. The same length level with the top of the door is the window. And we have one window there and because it's longer down that side they've managed to put another window here. Right now this part here we have that's a, uh, a drain, drain pipe. So I've got one here and just behind all this greenery we've got another window here. So on this part here we have a few and all the doorway there. This goes right away across there and there are two rooftops here. One goes back and one is at the handle there. So just on about here we can put a drain pipe. And there's one there also. And I think there's one here. And we mustn't forget to put the overhang there. Otherwise it'll look daft. So here we have a one of the last of the window. We've got a lovely handy tree here. Okay, so this part here is I mean, the biggest building. This is going to lead us into it. Up to there. And these windows go right up to the, to the eaves. Strangely enough, they come quite level now as we're leveling out at the top of the hill. And here we actually start to look upwards. That line of angle goes still up there. Not as much as here, because this is levelling out this building. And from our position, we are here. And well, we've got this um, lovely red brick These are arched windows in there. Right, they go in there. And there's a little lip for them there. <coughs> now the back, the horizon comes around about. the far horizon yeah and then we have a closer horizon which is got trees and greenery and grass and that, that goes there 
So we've got two horizons here, the very far distance ones, and that's quite bluey. And this one here, we start to get a bit of warmth in this one, a bit of colour from that one. So we'll try and work those out together. Right, here we go. Some water on the go, eh? I'm going to give this a, a good old washing right down to where the buildings are. <clears throat> Not going to be too bothered if it slips into the building work because the nature of this it's it's wet and wet or wet on wet I should say and in fact I'm going to face this down here I want to create a mood um, so add a bit of warmth to this painting so this mood is going to extend right the way down to the bottom part so it's going to be lovely and warm around here and cool up there so here we go and mix a little bit of Sandry blue with a little bit of um, violet just for the top. A little bit of grey, to a grey there. See, not doing, not going too crazy. I don't want to overstress this top part but I want to fix this down now let it flow down and here is where we're starting the lovely warm colours oh this is just a an underpainting really it's a it is a, a very, very loose, it don't really matter what you, as long as you know the, whether you're having a warm area or a cool area, that's all. So when it's darker here, at the foreground I want to add a bit of coolness there. And a bit of that there. I just want to emphasize the way these this goes here. We get some quite neat paint on there now. Down around that way. Even though it's going that way, I want the road to like dip. Middle there, so it's going to dip there. I get a bit of darker colour on just to emphasise these dips, like it's not been touched for flipping centuries. That's it. light is coming from this angle so we're gonna have shadows all over we have the light belting off these houses and we're gonna have lots of shadows from this angle here from the buttressed walls which is good because it get it gives us this contrast and it's good to have like half your painting or one side of your painting dark, another part light, and it just balances everything out. Some more warm colours in there. Oh, look at that. It's like a, a spring morning. This is going to uh, dry 
uh, much light anyway so I'm not that bothered about it being too dark I need it to be dark and if you're painting wet in wet you get these lovely um, soft edges and they're great to infer that there's a bit of greenery there and I'm going to add a little bit of green here now because this part here is a great way just to get it to blend in at this stage because I want some lovely soft edges at the bottom don't want soft edges at the top so I'm using my bottled water so I mean I want soft edges at the top I, mean, I don't want sharp edges so blending that there right now if you find that the green is starting to invade your warm areas just go back with a stronger colour of warmth there and it'll push it back oh yeah because your last colour is the most dominating colour shadows here these are going to be lovely shadows I have a little bit of blue in my shadows here this is um, emphasizing the cool area against this warmth area which is feeding into feeding into And just lift some of that runny water there from here. Right. Now this top area should be just damp enough to get a lovely soft bluey horizon. So let's see if we can mix a colour for that so I'm using a bit of um, Prussian blue here um, a little bit of burnt sienna yeah, burnt umber so it's quite a, a dull blue so from this side that's Put it in wet and wet because I want it to be quite blurry and that will give us an idea of distance. Okay, it's got a little bit where it should have gone there, so I'll just lift it out. That's the idea, that's the advantage of wet and wet. You can control it to a certain extent. Now I'm going to use a little bit of, um, add a bit of green to this area now. I don't want it too green so I'm going to add a bit of green gold now. It. 
Now let that dry. We'll come back in a bit. 